Do you believe in God? Me? I, the so, creator? Uh, yeah, so I'm, the, the more I look at the universe, um, just the less convinced I am that there is something benevolent going on. So if you, if, if your concept of a creator is someone who's all powerful and all good, that's not an uncommon pairing of powers that you might describe to a creator. All powerful and all good. And I look at disasters that afflict Earth and life on Earth. Volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, um, congenital birth defects. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable on Earth by natural causes. And I just ask, how do you deal with that? So philosophers rose up and said, if there is a God, God is either not all powerful or not all good. I have no problems if as we probe the origins of things, we bump up into the bearded man. If that shows up, we're good to go. Not a problem. There's just no evidence of it. And this is why religions are called faiths. You know, the, the headline I saw recently says, Pentagon confirms UFOs are real. That's, that's, that title has no meaning. Well, it gets me happy. Well, no, no, it has no meaning. I know what you're saying. Yeah, it just has it's, no meaning. It's unidentified, so unidentified things are real. Yeah, of that course. That doesn't mean anything. It, it, yeah. does, it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean they're anything. aliens. If, right. we, if the title said, Pentagon confirms UFOs are actually aliens, that, that, that is a headline. Right. That's a good headline right there. Right. But that's not what anybody can report. Extrapolating, you get the first couple of years correct. Five years, 10 years out, you are completely off. And you said 500 years, 1,000 years. Let's shorten that a little bit. Mm. Let's say 30 years. You say, no, that's not much. The, the, you know, we need more time than that. Ask yourself. Let's go back to 1960. We didn't have a spaceship. The United States did not have a, a, a rocket to carry people that wouldn't blow up on the launch pad. Okay? We weren't there yet. Mm. 30 years later, it's 1990, people have laptop computers. And we've been to the moon six times over. So when I think today to 30 years from now, I'm saying, I don't know that I can predict anything. But there's some things that I know are going to happen in the next few years. Self-driving cars, uh, it's going to take over like that. Why? Because you replace your car every, f half the people replace the car every five years. That's my, that's my... Questions that have no answers. Th well, that's my, that's my segue, my awkward segue to the book I just published. Oh. Okay. Called Cosmic Queries. Oh. It's a book that is not based on answers that we have. It's based on questions that we've posed. And some questions have really good answers and we're good. Others, we're still poking around and we think we're on the tail of it. And other questions, we don't even know if it's the right question. So it's a celebration of human curiosity at its deepest level with whole sections. One of them is, how did it all begin? What's it all made of? Are we alone in the universe? Very relevant to now. Also, how will it all end? And when you're on the bleeding frontier of science, you don't always know if the question you ask is even valid. And the energy of the visible light is now microwaves. You point a microwave telescope in any direction, it is bathed in microwaves from that event. Now, when you're measuring something that is uh, the estimated date of the Big Bang's 13.8 billion years. Billion years ago, right. Is that... October 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> is that the <laughs> amount that they can measure or is it? Is there a potential further point that can't be measured? So we see objects that sent their light to us basically 14 billion years ago. How about objects farther away than that? There are surely objects farther away. But the yeah. universe is old and isn't old enough yet for its light to reach us. An so then, infinite number of them, right? The idea is that if the universe is that big... And it has an infinite number of universes, there are infinite combinations of events and particles and, and manifestations an infinite number of, of Neil deGrasse Tyson's... Possibly. ...on an infinite number of these podcasts. I wouldn't want that, because that would be... I want, it's fine. I'd like different people. But, there uh, are plenty of those, too. <laughs> okay, plenty of those, too. So now watch. Now imagine a universe where the laws of physics are slightly different. That's a different manifestation of this process. Right. Uh, is the speed of light a little different? Is the, mm. you know. So that's another level of multiverse. And there's there's several levels, but the, the most significant one is one where not only are the laws of physics different, maybe there's a universe where there are no laws of physics at all. A wild west of physics? <laughs> wild west. Or, or maybe there's one where even the parameters that establish mathematical truths are fungible. Ooh. Right? So the value of pi is some, something else. It Extra props. I'm using the word fungible. It's oh. one of my new favorite words. Is that right? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Non-fungible non tokens have brought it up. <laughs> if I was insensitive to something that I would have wanted to be had I known, that comes out. Mm. 
that's there. And that informs future encounters I have with people, informs sentences I compose for books. And that's me, I, I, my, in my mind's eye, being a servant of your curiosity. So you think of it almost as an ingredient in your education. Yes, yes. Yeah, you have it's not to... just, here's some, you better learn this or you're going to flunk the test. Every student who flunks the test is a statement for me about the instructor, not about mm. the student. The idea that the universe is gone in 20 billion years, that freaks me out. The idea that there'll be no universe at all to speak of what we're looking at. It'll all be molecules broken down. So know? let me tell you about the big rip. Yes. So it's terrifying. Yes. Because fabric, yeah. you stretch it to a point and it, and, and it rips. So that's just the end of the end of the end with that happening. If something puts it in check, then we keep expanding. And what happens is all stars die, all, um, and the proton decays, and we're left with an entire universe of just sort of base particles where nothing happens. Right. Because there's no source of energy left. And that's a less interesting fate than a big rip. But what's for me interesting is, that, and by the way, all this is in the last chapter. We talk about how it might all end. What for me inter interesting is the levels of multiverses that might exist. So, so <laughs> in our universe, there are other... There, there are likely other bubbles that are also expanding, and we're just one bubble among them. And this is the sort of traditional multiverse that people think about. And there may be an infinite number of these dotted into the total universe. Can I pause you right here? Yeah. So the idea is that our universe is infinite. Possibly, yes. The bubble that uh, we exist bubble. in mm -hmm. may be infinite? No. Our no. bubble is one bubble within an infinite universe, and that infinite universe contains infinite an infinite number, number of, of bubbles. other bubbles. Other Correct. Bubbles. But our bubble is essentially as we can measure it, 13.8 billion light years across. No, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. It's just that it's been 13.8 billion years travel time for the light. But over that time, the universe has expanded. So we have a diameter of like 100 billion light years across. So you have to ask, how much stronger is the moon's gravity from one side of your head to the other? So that That's was, the question. Right. It would have to be pulling you in a certain direction. It'd have to be it had to be stronger on one side than the other and have to stretch your head. We can calculate how much that is. And I did it once. It was something like a millionth the force that's operating on your head from the weight of your pillow. But you're not creating lycanthropic stories based on whether you had a tempur pillow or a down pillow. What do you think is the origin of those stupid stories then? Well, people, there is always a thing. People like finding excuses outside of themselves to account for their reprehensible behavior. Oh. So what you have is a self-fulfilling process. You read all these stories about acting crazy under full moon. A full moon is the only phase that rises at sunset and sets at sunrise. So it's up all night. You go to the bar. Most places the bar closes 2 a.m. You come out. The full moon is high in the sky. And you read all these stories. And so you just, you're ready to just act crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so this is life imitating art in that case. So what you really need to do is check to see when you don't know it's a full moon and you come, because it's cloudy and you come overcast and you come out of the bar, do you act crazy? I bet you the answer is no. I always but not only that, that just the not ahead. only that people's ability to judge when the moon is full is kind of loose. So the to, to the untrained eye, the moon is full for about four days. Just consider that as well.